Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. If you like watching tutorials while you're sewing or crafting or even listening to Pandora, I think you're going to enjoy video number seven of our pin cushion series. Today, we're making a phone stand pin cushion. These are the pieces that you will need for today's tutorial and the sizes. There is a pattern link down in the description box below. You'll see the measurements here on the paper. We're ready to get started. Now, because I like to fussy cut my fabrics sometimes, I am going to be using my laminator to create some template plastic. I'm using the five mil, which is a little bit thicker and just running this through my laminator two times to get it nice and bonded. You can also use the uh, cutting mats from the Dollar Tree, the clear cutting mats. You get two for a dollar. That makes great template plastic. It's raining. I'm not going to the Dollar Tree today, so I will create my own. With my template plastic, I'm going to go through and trace right directly on the lines with a Sharpie each one of my templates. The triangle should be five inches from side to side at the bottom, and it should be four and uh, three quarters tall with a little notch at the top. This is going to be the sides of our pin cushion. And then for the phone stand, you'll need one piece that is five inches tall and four inches wide. Then you'll also need a three pieces that are five inches by five inches. And that's for the body of our pin cushion. So this pattern is actually charm pack friendly. Just tracing out each one of my templates and cutting them out directly on the lines. Now I'll show you how these clear templates come in so handy when you want to fussy cut your fabric pieces. I'm just going to use a marker and trace my design right onto the fabric. This will be in the seam allowance. We're not too concerned with the pin marks. Now I'll take my straight edge ruler and my rotary cutter and cut out my pieces directly on the lines. So you should have two side pieces. And then a three five inch by five inch pieces and one that is four inches wide and five inches tall. Now I want to add a little pocket on the back of mine. So I'm just going to cut apart this little baby pair of blue jeans. I love going to the thrift store, garage sales and looking for toddler size jeans for the small little pockets. <laughs> Just going to remove the backing of the pocket and trim all the way around. This part, of course, is optional. There's a little baby pocket. And now we can start sewing together our pin cushion. So I have the front and the back of our pin cushion. We're going to join these two pieces right in this seam flipping pretty sides together. I'm going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. The next thing we'll do is we'll add our triangle sides. The little notched area is going to go towards the top where we just joined the front and the back. That notched area, you want to line that up edge to edge with your seam allowance right there. You'll match up the raw edges all the way across. And you're going to have a little flippy part right at the end that hangs over your five inch square. You can use some pins to hold this in place if you need to. And 
And when we bring this over to the sewing machine, again, we're still using the quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to start sewing right in this seam. So about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the triangle, right here is where we're gonna lower the needle. So there's our seam. We're gonna slide this up underneath of the sewing machine. We're gonna bring our needle right down in that seam. Take that pin out here in just a second. We're gonna take a couple of stitches and then we're gonna back stitch and lock that into place and then sew all the way to the other side. This is exactly how you're going to attach the other triangle as well. So the notched edge lines up directly with that seam allowance. And you're sewing to that seam that joins the front and the back together. Now you're gonna take the other end of your triangle and match it up to the other side of the body of your pincushion. See the little flappy right there? You wanna match that up right to the edge of that seam. Lay it down nice and flat. Starting at the end, we're gonna sew our quarter inch. And when we get to those seams, we're gonna stop and take some back stitches. So there's our first side. Isn't that pretty with the fuzzy cut flowers? <laughs> and then we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. You might have to fumble with it to get it to lay down nice and flat. This part always seems to be a little bit awkward for me, but it just always seems to turn out so pretty. <laughs> Eventually, you'll get it to lay nice and flat, just like this. <laughs> you might have to just maneuver those other seams right out of the way. And once you get it nice and flat, you can bring that over, lower your needle right down where that seam is, right here, starting there, we'll sew down this side. Sometimes I think, you know, when you're watching a tutorial, <laughs> uh, it kind of makes sense. But once you actually sit down to do it, then you're like, oh, yes. Okay, now I get it. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. So there's our other side. Nice and pretty. So now we can make the portion that actually holds our phone. We're going to take the 4 inch by 5 inch section. We're gonna fold that directly in half, pretty sides facing each other. We're gonna sew one end completely shut, and then the second end, we're gonna start at the edge, and we're gonna leave about a one inch opening right at that fold, and do some back stitches, lock that into place. That's where we're gonna fill the end of our uh, little phone stand when we're all done. I'm gonna turn this right side out and poke out our corner. And then I'll just give that a press with the iron. Once it's all pressed nice and pretty, I'm gonna just take a straight edge ruler and a marker. Right at the edge of the opening, I'm gonna make some lines 
quarter of an inch away from each other. Four little lines. And then we're just gonna do a straight stitch right over top of those four lines. Just like you see me doing here. Once you're done, you can go through and trim away all the little thread bits <laughs> at the edges. Once it's all nice and pretty, we're gonna finish assembling our phone stand. We're gonna take the raw edge of the phone stand part and put it inside our pin cushion, pinning that into place right in the center on the front side of your pin cushion. Then we're gonna take the bottom of our pin cushion bag and lay that right in there, matching up the raw edges. And we're gonna sew this seam. There's our little phone stand sewn right in there. I like to go across the bag and sew the next seam. Then we'll sew our first side shut, pulling those raw edges together. You might need to use a pin just to hold it into place. Squishy, squishy the bag <laughs> until you can get that seam nice and straight. And then we have one side left. So this is the side where we're going to leave an opening so that we can turn our pin cushion right side out. So I start at the edge and go in a little bit, back stitch, jump down to the other side and finish that seam. So here is our opening. Now we're done at the sewing machine. I'm just gonna take a few minutes and turn this right side out. What I love about the templates is even though I use denim on this one, you could totally fussy cut each one of the sections of your pin cushion. I think that would be so adorable and it's, it's really worth the extra time when you're fussy cutting because it just turns out so pretty. Once your pin cushion is turned right side out, here's our opening. I'm gonna start filling up this pin cushion with some rice. Trying to be as less messy as I can. <laughs> Just using a little pixie cup. And I'm gonna fill my pin cushion about halfway and the rice really just adds some weight to the pin cushion. There's all kinds of things that you could fill your pin cushions with. I have tons and tons of rice on hand and I'm trying to not go out in the rain to go to the store to get anything else for my pin cushions. And so I'm using the rice. And then once it's about halfway full, I'm gonna go back in with some polyfill and finish stuffing this pin cushion. What I really like about the polyfill is you can really get in those corners and uh, give your bag or your pin cushion a really nice shape. Just working it all the way around all the empty pockets, filling that in. Once it's full, I'm just gonna take the opening and just pin it shut and then hand sew that closed. So here we go, isn't that pretty? Here's my opening. I've hand stitched that shut. See the fussy cut sides? Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> totally worth the extra effort. Now we're gonna fill in the extra, the little pocket on the stand part of our pin cushion. For this part, the opening is a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna use a funnel and a little bit of rice. Packing that rice in as full as it will go without making a huge mess. <laughs> 
And then we can take some thread that really matches that fabric really well and just hand stitch that opening closed. I love it when my thread really matches my fabric and blends in. <laughs> then I don't have to worry about my, th my little stitches being so, so precise and so pretty, right? We're just gonna sew right to the little end of the mm -hmm. opening. Mm -hmm. I left my opening about an inch big, I would say. Once we get to the end, I'll just do a double knot and bury my thread tail into that little section. So how adorable, right? <laughs> you could set this on your work table, watch your tutorials, play uh, Pandora or the radio. For the little pocket, I am done sewing. So I'm gonna use some permanent Fabri-Tac glue and just glue that po pocket right to the back. Fabri-Tac glue dries really fast and it's permanent and clear. For the bottom, I've decided to take a piece of the non-skid uh, shelf liner that you can get at the Dollar Tree and just cut myself a section and glue it to the bottom. There we go. Isn't she so cute? Oh my goodness. I do think I could have filled her up a little bit more, but that's okay. She's pretty. Look how well she works. I'm going to make some of these for the kids. <laughs> they won't use them as pin cushions, but they would use them as cell phone holders. Now we have this cute, adorable little pocket on the back. We could put our scissors in there, add a little binding clip, add some pins, <laughs> and now we're ready to go to work, right? We're ready to watch a tutorial and learn something new. So I hope that you've had a lot of fun. I hope that you've been inspired to make your own bone stand pin cushion. Until I see you next time, have fun creating. Bye, everybody.